Okay, in this video, we are going to look into interfacing a load cell to a microcontroller. And the microcontroller that we're going to use is a PIC microcontroller on board the SCAM3 board. So this is my load cell. It's a one kilogram load cell. So that's a thousand grams, or about 2.2 pounds. Now there's four strain gauges on this load cell. There's two on the top, and there's two on the bottom. And they're configured as a Wheatstone bridge. Now there's four wires feeding this load cell. Now two are the excitation voltage, which could be 3.3 .3 volts or 5 volts, and I'm using 3.3 .3 volts in this video. Then the two output wires are the green and white, and they're fed into this HX711 breakout board, which is a load cell amplifier. And the output is a 24-bit ADC, so we extract the load cell data through the 24-bit ADC into the microcontroller. Okay, I have my SCAMP3 board powered up and it's running some code which is reading the 24-bit analog to digital converter on board the HX711 breakout board. And I have a 100 gram weight and I can apply that to my load cell and in my code I have a window from 100 grams to 1000 grams which will apply the LEDs from 100 grams to 1000 grams. So right now it's set for 100 grams so if I barely touch it you can see the first LED comes on and if I press hard, I could get it all the way up to 1,000 grams, full scale, and all the way back down to 100. So I have 100 grams to 1,000 grams in 16 LEDs, so the resolution isn't that great. It's just a demo to show you that I could go from 100 grams all the way up to 1,000 grams, full scale, and then back down to our 100 gram starting point. Okay, here's my load cell amplifier that has my HX711 chip, which you can see in the middle. Now the four pins on the top, those are the four wires coming in from the load cell. On the very bottom, we have some pins, and the very right is VDD. That's powering the chip, which is 3.3 .3 volts. The next one is VCC. That's the excitation voltage, which is feeding the Wheatstone bridge. And I'm using 3.3 .3 volts, and you can see I have those two pins jumpered together, and I'm feeding 3.3 .3 volts to both. Data is a data output of the 24-bit ADC, and that's fed into one of the pins of the GPIO on the microcontroller. Clock comes from the microcontroller, and that's the input. It's feeding the HX711 and then we have a common ground. So from these pins we extract the data from the load cell through the 24-bit ADC. Okay, here's a schematic diagram of the circuit that I built on my breadboard. And we can see the SCAMP3 board is feeding power and ground, 3.3 .3 volts, to power the HX711 breakout board. Now on the very left we have the load cell with the four wires that are fed into the HX711. Now the red and black are feeding into the load cell, that's our excitation voltage at 3.3 .3 volts and the white and green wire is coming out of the load cell and that's fed into the HX711 amplifier which has a gain of 128 and output of the amplifier is fed into the 24-bit ADC. Now the output of the ADC, D out, is fed into the GPIO pin 2 of the SCAN3 board and pin 3 of the SCAN3 board, the GPIO, that's the clock which is feeding the ADC. Now the SCAN3 board is looking at the D out and when it's high, that means it's busy, that means it's doing a conversion, so it's, wait, it's waiting for D out to go low, and when D out goes low, it's going to send a clock pulse into the ADC. Now every clock pulse, we're going to get a one bit out of the D out, so after 24 clock pulses into the ADC, we're going to get a 24 bit word into the SCAMP3 board, and that's going to be our load cell data. Okay, here's the code running on the SCAMP3 board, and it's written in Flashforth, so the first thing we do, we create two values. One is called high byte, the other one is called low word. And this will contain the 24-bit load cell data. The next word is init.gpio. So this is where we initialize pin 2 as an input. That's connected to the D out. And pin 3 will be configured as an output. And that's connected to the clock of the HX711. The next word, it's called D out dot low question mark. That senses when D out goes low. That means it's ready for a conversion. Pulse will generate a one microsecond pulse, and that's connected to the clock of the HX711. Then we have two words called read high byte and read low word. Now read high byte will send eight clock pulses to the ADC, and we'll get eight bits back from the ADC. And read low word will send 16 clock pulses into the ADC, and we'll get 16 ADC bits back. Now together that'll be 24 bits. That'll be our 24 bit word. Then we give it one more pulse, and that will, that will configure the gain of the amplifier to 128. Now I have a word called test. This is running continuously. And it's running read high byte, read low word. Then it's going to print out the 24-bit data word. 
and that 24-bit data word will be between 0 and 167.77215. So that's a nine signed uh, data uh, length for 24 bits. So this is running continuously, so you could get yourself uh, some, some calibration weights, like 100 gram weights, and put it on your load cell, and then read the value you get out. You'll get a 24-bit value. Then you could calibrate your load cell. Okay, so that was my little tutorial on how to interface a load cell to a microcontroller. So you could take your load cell, hook it up into the HX711 amplifier, feed it into your favorite microcontroller, and then calibrate it with some calibration weights. Now you, you could have a way to measure weight for your robotic projects.